الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وآله اللهم وفقنا لما تحبه وترضاه من القول والعمل واجعل عملنا خالصا لوجهك الكريم اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على حبيبك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذا اليوم المبارك يوم الجمعة الخامس عشر من شهر صفر لعام 1434 هجرية and uh, we'll continue uh, with the seer of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the title of this episode justice practiced in Mecca at the doorsteps of the Kaaba justice in Mecca at the doorsteps of the Kaaba after talking in brief about how the Prophet ﷺ came to Mecca and how he had the right to crush those people who have persecuted him and his companions for more than two decades. How he has the right to apply justice on them and take them to the Islamic court as criminals. Not only criminals of war, but even ordinary crimes that they were doing, genocide that they did to Mecca, persecution that they applied in the Prophet ﷺ, how they traced him to Medina and tried their best into even uprooting him and his companions. Now we look at one incident when the Prophet ﷺ entered the sacred mosque, Al-Masjid Al-Haram, along with his companions who were driven out of Mecca. Some was sent to exile in Habasha, in Abyssinia. Some ran away to Medina. Some even went to Habasha for two times. And they went to Medina again, seeking refuge. Some who were persecuted, who were mutilated on the streets of Mecca. Rocks were put on their chests. Some were even killed, like Sumayyah and Yasser, okay, and others who were persecuted to death, tortured to death. All that the Prophet ﷺ and his companions did not forget these memories. They did not forget these incidents. But revenge is not an Islamic concept. As we know, the Prophet was given permission by Allah to crush those people. And it's not given to any before him or after him. So now the Prophet is entering Al-Masjid Al-Haram, the sacred mosque. And his companions are seeing the Kaaba. They were deprived from entering there. But the idolaters, the pagans, the mushrikeen were allowed. And they come to pollute the place. They don't come to perform ibadah. Mm -hmm. Now the Sahaba wanted to make sujood to Allah, to the owner of this house. They wanted to make tawaf, fulfilling the command of Allah. They were deprived. They were not permitted to do, to do so. Now, Bilal is beside Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the black ex-slave of the Meccan tyrant elites. Now Suhaib, who was deprived from his wealth was taken away from him because he became a millionaire in Mecca. They said, you came poor. If you want to leave Mecca, leave all your wealth behind. He gave. And he, he bought himself. He gave his money so they would allow him to, to leave Mecca. Now those people are victorious. They are with the great liberator. Al-Fatih Al-Azim, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we talk about Fatih and he's Al-Fatih. For every Fatih there is a Fatih. The Fatih was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Al-Gaddafi used to call himself Al-Fatih. <laughs> anyway, Allahumma Salli Ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered. He was humble. He was lowering his head. Tears were coming out of his eyes, thanking Allah. Abu Bakr was next to him. Both left last. Now they came, both first, next to each other. Both with full eyes, with full tears, 
thanking Allah. This is not the way victorious people come. No. This is a new type of fath. This is the real liberation. So when the Prophet Sallallahu he went immediately to the Kaaba, to the gate of the Kaaba. Who had the keys for the Kaaba? Bani Shayba. Uthman ibn Talha ibn Shayba. He was there and he was looking down because they were persecuting Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad wouldn't dream of entering the Kaaba. He was not allowed to come to Mecca, not to mention to make tawaf and enter the Kaaba. Now he is there in front of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, feeling ashamed of himself. Sweating. The Prophet said, what is the key of the Kaaba? He gave it to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There were two people next to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who looked at the key at the hands of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and they were extremely joyous. You know who are they? His cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib and his uncle Al Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. You know why? Because Banu Hashim, the family of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, were in charge of irrigating the Hujjaj. They will bring water from Zamzam and they give water to quench the thirst of the Hujjaj when they come. And they were very happy to do that. <laughs> they looked at it and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, this is a great chance that those people don't deserve. They didn't allow people to go to the Haram who worship Allah truly. You and your followers, the companions, the best people on earth, were not allowed to go to the Haram. They locked the Kaaba against you. Now Allah gave it to you. Please give it to us. So we'll have two honors. Honor of taking care of the Hajjaj and the honor of being the gatekeepers of the Kaaba. The Prophet didn't say anything. The Kaaba was opened. He went there inside and he made Salah. But look what happened inside the Kaaba. What happened at the doorsteps of the Kaaba? This wouldn't take place any place, any, 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 anywhere in history, at any time, among any real liberators. The Prophet was the ultimate decision maker. Everybody was submitting. Mecca has changed. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became the undisputed leader not only of Mecca but all of Arabia if Mecca submits all Arabia submits it's not only the Arabia but the whole world now is under the vision of Islam the whole world is targeted by Islam everybody was shaking in his thorns and thrones so the Prophet وسلم, while he was inside the Kaaba, revelation came to him. Subhanallah. Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha wa idha hakamtum bayna al-nasi an tahkumu bil-adl. Subhanallah. Allah ordered you, orders, Inna Allah ya'murukum, orders you. And to addu al-amanati ila ahliha. To give trust back to their, to its people, its owners. And when you judge, you judge with justice. The Prophet immediately, while he was hanging at the door of the Kaaba, and Bilal was ready to climb to give the adhan, the one who was saying on dust, and stones were put at his chest so he couldn't move. Ahadun Ahad, now he's going to say it at the top of the Kaaba, in front of all his persecutors. They're not only enemies, 
persecutors, the people who used to persecute him. It's not Abu Bakr, it's not Umar, it's not Ali, it's not the Prophet, it's not Uthman, it's not all these elite of Quraysh. It is this poor black Abyssinian slave who is going to climb the Kaaba and declare the new world order. Akhwan. This deen, we need to be very proud of it. Wallah, ya Akhwan. So the Prophet was hanging to the door of the Kaaba and he said, Uthman, where are you? It's not Uthman ibn Affan. Uthman ibn Talha ibn Sheba. Come. He said, Yes, Prophet of Allah. What do you want from me? Are you going to? <laughs> he said, This key is for you. Al Abbas was looking. Ali was looking, was looking, and the key has gone away from them. This is for you to the day of judgment. Nobody will take it from you but a tyrant. Take it. Subhanallah. You see, justice, Yahwan. Now justice is practiced at the door of the Kaaba. This is among the first things that took place in the Haram in front of all those people who were the enemies of Islam, who were the persecutors of the Prophet Now Banu Shayba, until this day, they hold the key to the Kaaba. And they inherit the key generation after generation until the day of judgment. Nobody can take it from them because it was Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who gave it to them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.